Hello everyone, this is N. Kavita, working as Assistant Professor in Department of Electronics and Instrumentation Engineering, Hindustan College of Engineering and Technology, Coimbatore. Today we are going to see a topic on safety, responsibilities and rights. All these three are the basic parameters for an engineer to be a professionally ethical one. What is called a safety? A safety is defined as a risk that is known and judged. A risk is a potential that something unwanted or harmful may occur. It is the result of unsafe situations. Say for example, if there is a probability of safety, definitely there will be a probability of risk. So without risk, we cannot be able to have the safety. So this risk is defined as probability of occurrence and consequence of its magnitude. So uh, in general, there are three different uh, types of testing methods which can uh, lead to the functions of safety system components. The first testing is destructive testing. In this specific approach, testing is done till the component fails. It is too expensive and it is very realistic and useful. Second type of testing is prototype testing. In this specific type of approach, what we do is we have the vital components in a system and these components are being tested with respect to the dimensions and this dimension analysis could be used for the projects and actual conditions. So the third type of testing is simulation testing. With the help of a computer, a simulation can be done. The safe boundaries can be obtained with the help of these testings. And here we can able to make the effects of some controlled input variables and the outputs can be easily predicted in a better way. So this safety is a very integral part of an engineering design. So according to William W. Lawrence, a thing is safe if it risks are justified to be acceptable. So we can also say that a design or thing has to be safe if the person who judges this should have the perceived risk in high. The drawbacks of the definitions of Lorenz are underestimation of risk, overestimation of risk, no estimation of risk. So we will see in detail about what is this risk is all about. So a thing or a product is proved to be dangerous or hazardous, then it is said to be unsafe. A risk is a potential that something unwanted or harmful may occur or I can say that it is a probability of a specific level of hazardous sequence. In turn, we can also define risk as the product of probability and the consequence which is faced because of this risk. On the basis of technology, risk includes the danger of bodily harms or an environmental degradation. So good engineering practices is always concerned with safety. So whenever a society is more influenced by technology, obviously we face a lot of risks by the users and also by the producers. So what happens is it creates an ecological imbalance. So a safety demands will be higher in this particular degree. So a risk may fall into many categories and majorly it can fall into one of the following categories. Low consequence and low probability which can be easily ignored. High consequence, high probability. Low consequence, high probability. And finally high consequence and low probability. So what is this acceptability of risk? So when we can consider the risk as acceptable. So according to William D. Rowe, the risk is acceptable when those affected are generally no longer apprehensive about it. So doubtfulness will always depend upon how the people will take the risk and how the people will perceive it. Say for example, if you are undergoing a specific project which is assigned to you, it always depends on the risk which you are taking to complete the project in a successful manner. So this perception of risk is most influenced by many of the factors. First one is volunteerism and control. Though people know that their actions are unsafe and still what they'll do is because of their own personal involvement, they'll take some risk. So that kind of risk is called voluntary risk. They take up these kinds of risky actions just for facing their thrills, amusement and fun. The second type of risk which is most acceptable is job related risk or in turn it is called job related pressures. So it depends upon the nature of what job we are doing. In most of the cases, these employees will be having the high risky jobs and don't have options to undertake them merely because of compulsion. Until unless they are doing it by willingness, they do it under compulsion. They rarely use the available safety equipments. For example, the employees, those who are working in a steel plant or a chemical plant, will have a lot of job related risks and they have more pressures on their job, but they take it for granted. So an engineer must know how the safety measures should be done before taking a specific risk. He must have the answers for the following certain questions. The first thing what we have to check is does the engineers have the right data? Is he satisfied with the present design? How he tests the safety or a product? And how does he measure the weight and risk for the benefit of a product? So there are certain analytical methods for creating this testing purpose. Several analytical methods are adapted in testing for safety product. 
The first method is scenario analysis. This is the most common method of analysis. So every project will start from the specific event and different consequences has to be studied. So this scenario analysis is a kind of qualitative method where different data can be taken for consideration. The second mode of analysis is failure mode and effect analysis. In this specific mode, various parts and components of the systems and the modes of failures are studied. So the major safe exit plan is that so safe exit principles are recommended until the conditions are produced in the following way. The product when it fails should fail safety, safely. The product when it fails it can be abandoned safely so that it is not harmed to others by explosion or either by radiations. So the user can safely escape the product. Say for example if the ship needs sufficient number of lifeboats for all the passengers and crews, multi-story buildings, they need a specific needable usable fire escapes in case of emergency. So in any kinds of situation we always should have a safe exit. The third category we are, we are going to see today is a human rights. So these human rights are defined by moral entitlements that place obligations on people to treat them with dignity and respect which is the most important part of ethics. Organizations and engineers are to be familiar with minimum provisions which are coming under the human rights so that the engineers and organizations of a firm they know the understanding and productivity. So there are different types of human rights which are coming under the different categories. The provisions under the human rights are given as follow. The first one is right to pursue legitimate personal interest. They should have their own personal interest for doing a specific work. The second is right to make a living. Right. Third one is right to privacy. They should have a specific privacy in their working environment. Next one is right to property, right of non-discrimination and no sexual harassment. So these are the basic rights. So the next thing what we are going to see is a few cases of professional rights. So under professional rights, the following provisions are always protected. The first one is right to form and express professional judgments, right to refuse to participate in any of the unethical activities which is not relevant to their jobs. The third one is right to fair recognition and they have to receive the remuneration for the work done by the professional service. So if it is given as a remuneration, the employee will face themselves in a very good situation to work hard for the organization. The next one is right to due process from employers, right for equal opportunities coming for different different categories. So right to equal opportunity is taken for non considerations of non discrimination, sexual harassment in the workplace, affirmative action or preferential treatment. So hope the basic three concepts like safety, risk and human rights, you have an overview on it. So being a professional, we should follow all such safety responsibilities and we have to understand what is our risk and we have to know what is all about our rights. Thank you for watching.